Hey, this is Kaz, and you're listening to Fort Fritz. Um, you know, uh, sp- spontaneously combust into flames. Don't listen to him, man, daddy. It's all it's all nonsense. Spontaneous human combustion. Come on, guys. There's been hundreds of cases over the past several hundred years. I think the earliest case was recorded in the early 19th century of spontaneous human combustion. Uh, basically, without any source of apparent ignition, the body bursts into flames sometimes to degrees where nothing is left but ashes. And to burn bones at a temperature like that, it's got to be at least 1,600 degrees what? Fahrenheit. That's what crematoriums use, and they do bodies for over two hours. But the unusual thing is that the extremities are usually unscathed, so hands, feet below what? the knees, and legs, sometimes the head is scorched, sometimes it's not, are untouched. And also the surroundings. Very little fire damage is apparent there. There's so, it's, so it's a quick burn. It but, has to be like, a, like a, hot. a massive, intense. There's different theories about it. So, the, but it has to be this massive burst of heat to incinerate. Um, and there's only been one recorded case where there's been witnesses to it occurring. Oh, what? This is the story of Jeannie Saffin. So Jeannie was a 61-year-old developmentally disabled woman. She had some complications to a bungled forceps delivery at birth. But she was living with her father, Jack, and her brother in Edmonton in northern London. On Wednesday, September 15, 1982, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Jeannie was sitting in the kitchen of their home along with her father. At 4.15 p.m., Jack looked over at his daughter and saw that she was ablaze. There was no source of flame in the kitchen save the pile of light on the stove. So Jack leapt into action, calling out to his son-in-law, Don Carroll, who was there visiting at the house, for help. The two men noted that the flames were coming out of her mouth and midriff. Oh my god. Don recounts that, quote, the flames were coming from her mouth like a dragon, and they were making a roaring noise, end quote. Whoa! And yet he also noted, he remembered that her clothes did not burn much at all. And when, when investigators held to this last point, they were insisting that it is a mystery how she came to be burned inside of unburned clothes. So the two men put out the flames wow. with water, and they called for an ambulance. And emergency workers, when they entered, noted that there was no smoke damage to the kitchen and that only a portion of Jeannie's red nylon cardigan had melted. So Jeannie was rushed to the North Middlesex Hospital, where she later succumbed to complications from her burns, and she passed away. What year was that again? This was 1982. And she died yes. in a hospital? Wow. But there has also been recorded cases. There was no witnesses. As recently as 2010, uh, a gentleman named Michael Flaherty in Galway uh, passed away, and he was near a fireplace, but there had been no other source of ignition, and he was torched so badly that some of his bones were reduced Get to him ashes. away from the fireplace. The, Get him away. Drag the beanbag away from the fireplace. The corner, we need this slave. The, yeah. the corner wait, 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 couldn't what? explain it. So he put on record that it was due to spontaneous human combustion. Okay, I'm instantly a believer in spontaneous combustion because Same the story you just told, it happened since people have stopped believing in fake stupid stuff. You know, <laughs> back in the... You know, 17 and 1800s, well, and people no. were like, hey, this guy just ascended up in the sky or okay, whatever. But, but and people, they're like, totally true, guys. I am saw it myself, bro. This is <laughs> <even> true. <laughs> I mean, like, Mike Schmidt You just described saying, all of religion. Mike <laughs> Schmidt Totally <laughs> true, bro. Totally <laughs> true, bro. A big dude in the sky. Mike He's Schmidt was real. playing third base for the Phillies when he hit the home run in the Astrodome, and they had it on camera. This could have been on camera. So we're talking about modern times, smarter people. I believe it. Spontaneous combustion, totally. Okay, exists. well, here's a famous example of how long people have known about this. In uh, Charles Dickens' book, Bleak House, one of his characters dies from spontaneous human combustion. What? Due to really? continually being in the spirits. A lot of people thought that it was due to alcoholism or something like that building up in, inside your body. Or methane building Tell up inside more. your intestines and so, like, you explode. So, again, reiterating, get man daddy away from the fireplace. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. This man's blood is... <laughs> I don't know. Bob, Bob, stuff Bob, 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 proof, do you think, is 100 proof? I'm like would, walking napalm. Oh, good lord. <laughs> good lord. 
If being continually in the drink caused spontaneous combustion, mm-hmm. I would be a tender house. I would be a uh, uh, Fahrenheit, you know, okay, 451 so at this point. There's a scientist named Brian J. Ford. He's a research biologist, and he's published articles. came up with this theory back since 1999, but as recently as 2012. So he's done experiments to disprove this alcoholism theory where he soaked pig tissue, which is very, very sim- similar, biologically speaking, to, like, human tissue, for over a week, like, high-proof stuff, like... Punch punch, and then trying to set it on fire would not ignite. So really, he has a theory that it's due to acetone, which the human body produces on a regular basis, but it's filtered out through the kidney and the livers through your urine. And uh, he thinks that it, in people who are sick or very young and not developed, so typically old people and very young people, who most cases of this have happened to, acetone builds up in this in the system. So he did another experiment where he soaked acetone into the same pork tissue and just got it near a hot light, and the thing burst into flames. He's even done a – there's a video. You can watch it. Oh, yeah. did he recreated a scale model of a training. person in furniture in pig, in pig of pig tissue with acetone. He, That's awesome. And he sets a little spark near it, and the thing bursts into flames to the point where, well, this was a little bit different. But it even burned down the set, and they had to put it out with a fire extinguisher. Okay. All right, so you're saying that I don't have to worry about alcoholism. Well, that could contribute to a buildup of acetone in the body, but so could, like, the keto diet or Atkins. More importantly, he's saying don't take off your pig's (sighs) nail polish with acetone. Yeah. But my pig looks so good with a nice red glaze. No, I know. yeah, and your 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 pig does look amazing with I a nice you. red Thank glaze. Thank you. Thank you. People it, don't it really say that does. enough about my pig. Well, I, I would be remiss if I didn't. So, do the pig skin experiments explain why the clothes and sort of internal, uh, sort of anything outside of the the, the trunk of a person is being bor- burned? Like okay, this? so this this goes into what is commonly called the wick effect. <clears throat> which explains that phenomenon. Oh, I like I know the first movie. I, I hear the second is. one's coming okay. out. Right. It's like Wicker uh, Man uh, with allow, Nick Cage. Allow me if, to give you, you will, a little... No, it's, uh, it's with uh, Keanu Reeves. Ah. If you will, Fritz. Good question, Kaz. This is a little kindergartner uh, thing. So uh, let's say you have a candle burning, uh, uh-huh. as I do back here. You blow the candle out, and you'll see a, thi- a, a thin but very concentrated trail of smoke coming up. If you then hold a light anywhere above that column... You see the wick re- reignite. That is correct on one part, and the, but also to he's talking about like the lessage of damage. So basically, with that happening, the human body becomes, in essence, an inside-out candle, where the clothing, as the body is heated up, the fat starts to melt into the clothing, and so that becomes the wick on the outside of the body, and the source of, of uh, raw material is the human body's fat, so that's wow. on the inside, so you're an inside-out candle, and that can account for extremely high temperatures and of low flame, which might be why there has been no damage to these places. Oh. It makes some sense, but if you think about it, like uh, in, this, in this case where the woman had uh, witnesses, the flames were coming from inside of her mouth, how do you, like... That's not necessarily your skin is where your fat is stored. How do how do we get this sort of dragon roaring of, of flame? Because of metal, evidently. Like, <laughs> like, like she was a fan of Dio. Well, yeah, I was gonna say Ronnie James Dio showed Dio. up at some point and yeah. everyone just burst into flames. Uh, yeah. well, like I said, it's a phenomenon that not line, many Roger. people understand. <laughs> it's, still, it's starting to gain ground though. So a lot of medical corners are using it as a cause of death now. Wow. Okay, so Man Daddy, uh, let's move you away from the flame. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Let's... uh...